Hello and welcome to the Better Human podcast. My name is Adam Wagner and I'm a barrister specialising in human rights. And this podcast is all about human rights. Today, for the first time, this is a video podcast. And the reason it's a video podcast is because I want to try and show you um, the rule of six regulations, which came into force um, earlier this week. They are um, an extremely important change to the lockdown rules that apply across most of England, but not all of England, and for reasons that I'll explain. And I'll be taking you through them and some of those key aspects. The Better Human podcast is supported by Goldsmiths Law and their pioneering new LLB undergraduate course taught in London. Goldsmiths has open days on Saturday the 5th of October, Wednesday the 6th of November, where you can meet their law academics and find out more about studying their law pro- programme. If you want to support this podcast and help to make it sustainable, then please go to www.betterhumanpodcast.com and give a few pounds a month um, to chip in to help it um, survive. If you want to support this podcast, then please consider giving a few pounds a month at www.betterhumanpodcast.com. <clears throat> Just a few opening points. First of all, this isn't legal advice. Please don't take it as legal advice. It's my attempt to try and guide you through the regulations so you can understand them and know where to find them, know what they look like, kind of get a feel for them, because these are affecting all of our lives. Um, It's been almost six months since the first set of lockdown regulations, which came into force on the 26th of March. And since then, we've had close to 50 different sets of emergency regulations um, they've become incredibly complex I mean they were complex to start with but um, they really have um, exploded in complexity and length so it's really important to try and understand them one common feature of these regulations since the beginning has been the divergence between government guidance which you can find on the gov.uk website and criminal law, which has underpinned the lockdown and made it enforceable by police who can give out fixed penalty notices of up to £10,000 in certain situations and also prosecute people who have breached the lockdown. Now, the guidance pretty much throughout has been stricter than the law, which has caused all number of problems, not least because the police have found it difficult to to know which bits they're meant to enforce um, on, on a number of occasions. Politicians have become very confused when they've been giving public statements because of this divergence. And I think the public have found it very difficult to understand exactly what the law is. But the important thing to understand from a individual's perspective is that the law is what can be enforced by the police and the guidance is what you should comply with anyway because it's the right thing to do but unless a rule is in the regulations which i'll show you it's not enforceable by the police you can't be prosecuted for it you can't be fined for it at least you shouldn't be fined for it um and and to that effect everybody should follow the guidance none of what i'm about to say is intended to imply that anybody shouldn't follow the guidance. I'm not trying to do this to allow people to find ways around the law simply to understand it. Um, the final point to make is that the English, sorry, the England lockdown, um, the regulations I'm about to show you, um, is not as strict as a number of the local lockdowns. So, for example, in Leicester, in Birmingham, the lockdown which is about to be imposed in the Northeast and in Greater Manchester. All of those lockdowns, I think, are stricter. For example, preventing gatherings in households of two or more people, um, of people who don't live in the same, who aren't part of the same household. Um, And you should always look to check if you're in a local lockdown area or a national lockdown area. So let's move to the rule of six. I'm going to share my screen so that you can see the... Um, the laws themselves because you got to see you got to actually get a feel for these things so here we are the health protection coronavirus restrictions number two england regulations 2020 um catchy not catchy so the 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 thing to 
notice as the, these are the number two regulations. The number one regulations were about not being able to leave and subsequently to be outside of your house without a reasonable excuse. And you'll remember that. You may remember that. First thing to note about these is they were is they were made and laid before Parliament and came into force very shortly after. Sorry, the first thing to understand about these is that they were made and laid before Parliament on the same day and they came into force um, a bit later. But if you look at the the Rule of Six Amendment, so this is getting into the weeds of it a bit, but if you the the regulations themselves, the second set of regulations were made in July and they've been amended four times since then. So that's why this document, which was produced on, um, well, it was published on Sunday night, about half 11 at night, about half, half an hour before it came into force, um, which is extraordinary, is called the Number Four Amendment Regulations. Number four. So it's the Fourth Amendment. So this document amends that document. And you can see there, this was made on the 13th of September. It came into force half an hour after it was published and it was laid before Parliament later that morning. And that's the reason that that breakneck procedure can be used is because it's all under the emergency powers um, conferred by the Public Health Control of Diseases Act 1984. It's an open question whether Parliament, when it passed that act, intended for this, you know, regulations released every week during a long crisis, six months to go, it's six months now, no reason it's going to stop, whether Parliament intended it to be used in that way, the emergency pre procedure. And the emergency procedure allows the government in certain situations of extreme urgency to pub to bring into force new criminal laws by the flick of the Secretary of State's pen. So quite literally, Matt Hancock signs the regulations as he's done with most of them. In fact, Priti Patel signed the um, Rule of Six regulations. And then when they sign them, um, that's it. They, they, they're out there and they usually come into force hours later. And they, they don't have to be laid before Parliament and approved um, until 28 days later and sometimes more if Parliament's in recess. So it's a pretty immense power um, to affect all of our lives with significant criminal laws. Let's start here with citation commencement application and interpretation not going to go into the the technicalities apart from talking about interpretation so when a court looks at a law it will ordinarily take the plain english um, meaning of a word or if it's a legal concept the legal meaning of the word um, or if it's interpreted in the act itself in the in the law itself um, the court will look to that so here we have some interpretation points, which you need probably need to know. Child means a person under the age of 18. Coronavirus means what it means. Elite sports person um, means someone who is um, driving a living from competing in a sport, senior representative, etc. But that comes up later. Um, it's not me. That's what it certainly isn't. Parent of a child includes any person who is not a parent of a child, but who also has sorry, but who has parental responsibility for or who has care of the child. Public outdoor place means any outdoor place to which the public have permitted access, whether whether or, whether on payment or otherwise, and includes various things. And that's important for later. And vulnerable, vulnerable person. Vulnerable person has been a concept or a, a, a phrase which has been in these regulations since the beginning. And if you remember, you could leave your house or be outside of your house if you were caring for or providing assistance to a vulnerable, vulnerable person. It has a specific meaning. It means any person age 70 or older, um, any person under 70 who has an underlying health condition, which includes, but it's not limited to, the conditions listed in Schedule 1 and any person who is pregnant. So just to know that that interpretation section is there. I'm not going to take you through all this. Requirements closed premises. This has been there since the beginning um, in the first set of lockdown regulations that used to include in the schedule where you go to find out which businesses are closed or parts of businesses are closed. Um, used to be a huge range of businesses from garden centres to cafes to restaurants. Um, but now it's just, I think, um, nightclubs and, and, and that kind of thing. OK, so here we are in the rule of six. Restrictions on participation and gatherings. Now, Regulation 5, one thing to note about this, when the Prime Minister announced the Rule of Six, he said, 
he would be simplifying the rule um, to, or simplifying the rules to make it easy for police to enforce. Um, but amazingly, this regulation on gatherings went from 850 odd words to over 2,000 words overnight on Sunday nights. It has massively increased in complexity um, and, in, and, in, and it in, introduces a number of ideas and concepts which weren't, and exceptions which weren't in the original lockdown regulations they are they are uh, they've been brought in for this um so i've highlighted these bits in yellow um, i'm working from a pdf here i should have said at the beginning i'm not working from the web version but i've just printed this as a pdf so that i can highlight it and scroll through it restriction on participation in gatherings during the emergency period no person may participate in a gathering which consists of more than six persons six people unless a. All the people in the gathering are from the same household or are members of the two households which are linked households in relation to each other. Linked households will come to later. Gathering or, that doesn't say or but it means or, the gathering is one in which, to which paragraph subparagraph 2 or 2a applies and the person concerned participates in this gathering alone or as a member of a, as a, of a qualifying group. Qualifying group will come to as well. Or paragraph three applies, sub, sub paragraph three applies. So the general rule is no gatherings of more than six people. And these are the exceptions. Um, and, and those two exceptions two paragraph two and two A and paragraph three are re refer to a list of other exceptions. Um, so let's look at some of the key exceptions. So if you remember, paragraph Subparagraph two, so it's five, two, um, is one of the exceptions, um, and it includes this proviso about um, being a member of a qualifying group. So subparagraph two is where the a gathering takes place on or at premises other than a private dwelling, which are operated by a business, a charitable, benevolent, or philanthropic institution or public body, or part of a premises used for the operation of a business, a charitable, benevolent or philanthropic institutional public body. So the point is here that those institutions can organise gatherings of more than six people, but it's under strictly limited circumstances. And 2A is, a, is the same thing, but in a public outdoor space. So one of these businesses, charity, benevolent or philanthropic organisation can organise events with more than six people in a public outdoor space. Um, but in the public outdoor space, they have to comply with paragraph 5G. Now, there's a theory out there um, um, that paragraph 5G was called 5G to upset opponents of 5G um, phone um, coverage because it's the, they're the kind of same people who think that coronavirus is a conspiracy. Um, and, and that's the very paragraph which sets out the um, the requirement to organise an outdoor gathering. But I don't think that's true. I think that's just an accident. Um, 2B. So this is qualifying group. For the purpose of paragraph 1B, so let's look at 1B. Um, the gathering is one which paragraph 2, two or 2A applies and the person concerned participates in the gathering alone or as a member of a qualifying group. Qualifying group is... Uh, a group of persons participating in that gathering which consists of no more than six persons or consists only of only persons who are members of the same household or who are members of two households which are linked households in relation to each other. So you have to go to a, um, a bigger gathering in groups of no more than six persons. And B, um, the, the person participates as a member of a qualifying group only if they're part of the qualifying group and while participating in the gathering they do not become a member of any other group of persons or otherwise mingle with the person with any person who is participating in the gathering um so th this was the, the otherwise mingle was picked up um, in the media coverage because this is uh, the first time that mingle has been used in relation to people um, in english law as far as i understand it but th th what's being said here is that if you arrive in a group of six to a gathering organised by a charity or business or, or whatever, um, you can't mix. Um, and there I'm qualifying it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm defining it, but I, I'm, I should just say you can't mingle with any person who's from another group. 
what that means, how it's enforced, um, what you're meant to do exactly um, is, is difficult to say because this hasn't been, this is all new stuff, um, but it probably means what you think it means, which is don't go and join the group or mingle with them. Um, so th here, are, these are all more um, exceptions. So elite sports people, I'm not going to include, I'm not going to talk about that. The gathering is reasonably necessary um, for, so sorry, I should have said um, this paragraph applies. Right? So, so we're in subsection three. And the reason this comes into as an exception is because paragraph subsection three applies as an exception to the rule of six. So all of these are exceptions. All of these A, B, C, D are exceptions. So elite sports people, reasonably necessary for work purposes or voluntary or provision of voluntary or charitable service. So that means you can have a gathering of any size, it, it would seem, um, at least, I mean, it seems that that's the plain reading of it, for work purposes, for the provision of voluntary or charitable services. And there's no, um, there's, there's no qualification, there's no requirement to comply with any particular guidance. Um, as there is later on. So for the purpose of educational training, for the purpose of childcare provided by a person registered under, etc. And this can all happen anywhere, public outdoor space or, or in, indoors. To provide emergency assistance, to enable one or more persons in, in, in a gathering to avoid injury or illness, and the illness includes mental illness as well as physical illness. Um, I say that as a qualification that I'm putting in, but I think it's undoubtedly correct. Um, or to escape the risk of harm, to provide care or assistance to vulnerable persons. Remember, we, we we saw that before. For the purpose of arrangements for access to and contact between parents and children, where the children do not live in the same household as the parents or one of their parents. So all of these are exceptions um, it, where the gathering is reasonably necessary. So it can't just be, you can't just make it up. It has to be reasonably necessary. And these are the more exceptions. The person concerned is fulfilling a legal obligation, whatever that means. The gathering is a sport group that's defined later. Gathering consists of no more than 30 persons and so these these are above here is not limited to 30 persons as far as I can tell. Um, and the gathering consists of no more than 30 persons as and, and is for the solemnization of a marriage, civil partnership, conversion of a civil partnership. It take place in religious premises um, and the manager complies with 5G. So this is marriages that take place on religious premises and they comply with the, these rules at 5G, which I'll, I'll show you. The gathering is a significant event gathering. So this is a new concept um, in, for these regulations. I think it started out as a life cycle event when the Prime Minister announced it and was, um, after some urgent consultation, was changed to significant event gathering. So this is no more than 30 people. It takes place at um, business, charitable, benevolent, philanthropic premises. Um, or in a public outdoor space, but does not fall within paragraph AA and BB, you see. Um, you can tell a legislation is getting complicated, as David Allen Green said in this podcast a few episodes ago, when it starts to get to AA, BB, CC, and ZAA, and um, B, 1, 3, 7, 8, 4, AA. Um, wedding reception, um, et cetera, same story. Um, this is good because this is the first time protest has appeared amazingly in six months of these regulations. So if, if the gathering is for the purpose of protest and has been organised by a business, charity, benevolent or philanthropic institution, a public body or a political body, that's pretty widely defined. Um, political body comes up later, um, but it can't just be an individual is the point there, unless they are one of those things. Um, the gathering organiser complies with 5G, which is the rules that I'll come to. The gathering is a sports gathering and the person concerned is taking part in that gathering. Um, that's defined later. The gathering takes place for criminal justice accommodation. Gathering takes place outdoors, um, whether or not in a public outdoor space, and is for the purpose of a relevant outdoor activity. And this is the grouse shooting exception, apparently, um, which I'll come to in a bit. The person concerned is attending a person giving birth. So they're um, with somebody giving birth, attending. Now, um, four, this is about raves. I'm oh, sorry, my 
highlighting has gone all funny. Um, during the emergency period, no, no person may participate in a gathering which consists of more than six persons, take place indoors, and will be a, ga- a kind of m- gathering mentioned in Section 63 1 of the Criminal Justice and Public Order Act 1994. Here's my little uh, addition to this, which I've I've copied and pasted um, the definition of a rave from that um, section of the Criminal Justice and Public Order Act. Um, a gathering on land in the open air. Um, it works because if it took place in the land of the open air is the definition so it's actually indoors a six person or or it's a more than six person indoor rave um where amplified music is played during the night with or without intermissions and as such by reason of its loudness and duration at the time which is played is likely to cause serious distress to the inhabitants of the locality and for this purpose such a gathering continues during intermission in the music and where the gathering extends over several days throughout the period which the amplifier I mean, I mean, actual fact, I say it's a rave. Outdoor with over 100 people, it's a rave. But indoor with over six people, it can just be a, a, a group of people playing loud music, having a party or, or not. 5A. OK, so here's some more definitions. Why these aren't in the interpretation bit, not sure. But I guess for, for, for ease, support group means a group which is organised by one of those um things that I've mentioned a number of times and not an individual to provide mutual aid therapy or any other form of support to its members and to those who attend its meetings such as but not limited to those providing support to victims of crime including domestic abuse those who are recovering from addiction etc etc and note such as but not limited to so really any support group would come into this um, for any anything really um, those are just exam- indicative examples. However, um, there's a rule of statutory interpretation, which is that when you have a, an indicative list, when you have a, a list which is not exclusive, um, th- the kinds of things which are not on the list are like are going to be like the kinds of things which are on the are on the list. So they've got to be a bit like these. Um, someone's pointed out to me on on Twitter that th- this does limit. Um, a number of support groups that aren't organized by these kind of organizations because a lot are very informal um tricky it is tricky um whether there's a way around it i'm not sure significant event gathering means to mark or a, a gathering for the purposes of a ceremony rite or ritual to mark or celebrate a significant milestone in a person's life according to their religion or belief such as events to celebrate the rite of passage or entry into into a particular faith I'm not going to ad lib it, um, but there it is. Um, or to mark a person's death or celebrate their life following their death, such as a funeral, according to the deceased person, religion or belief. I noticed that celebrating um, their, the, the, a celebration following a death, um, in, I think in the guidance, um, seems to be excluded. But the, the law is what's important here um, for the purpose of, of knowing whether you're doing something illegal. Um, that may have been changed. The purposes of Regulation 5B, a reference to belief, includes a reference to a lack of belief. That's a term of art which comes out of discrimination law, um, and I'm not sure it makes total sense in this context because I'm not sure how, in accordance to the, with their lack of belief, how a significant milestone celebration could be in, in accordance with someone's lack of belief. It opens up a can of worms, in my view. Sport gathering is a gathering which is organised for the purpose of allowing persons who are not elite sports people to take part in any sport or other fitness related activity, um, which is organised by business, charitable, sport, um, etc. Um, query whether that is includes five aside football matches, which are organised by individuals, but at a um, formal premises. I think the, the, the five aside football people have decided it does. I think they're potentially right i don't have a strong view on that um relevant premises mean premises that's what they mean and a relevant outdoor activity now this was apparently inserted to um i mean really to include grouse shooting um but pretend that um it was meant to be wider than grouse shooting don't know whether that's true or not it was reported in the newspapers um i'm not going to read it out but you you can find it there Okay, so 5G, I've been talking about 5G. Um, This is the requirement that's inserted into a number of the different regulations um, which imposes duties on people organising a particular um, activity. 
um, the organiser must have carried out a risk assessment which would satisfy the requirements of the um, Health and Safety at Work regulations 1999, um, whether or not they're subject to those regulations. So that's quite an onerous duty. And then they've got to take all reasonable measures to limit the risk of the transmission of coronavirus, taking into account the risk assessment carried out under subparagraph A and any guidance issued by the government which is relevant to the gathering. So that's where the guidance comes into play. And that's really important because it, 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 the guidance is pretty extensive. So you've got to be, if you're organising one of these events, you've got to um, follow the guidance. And if you don't, you might be subject to one of the mega fines which comes a bit later in these regulations of £10,000. Um, another important definition for the purpose of these regulations, there is a gathering, what's a gathering, where two or more people are present together in the same place in order to engage in any form of social interaction with each other or to undertake in any other activity with, sorry, or to undertake any other activity with each other. I mean, that is super, super wide any form of social act interaction or any other activity with each other. I mean, it's just two people present together. Um, but it does have in order to, that's, those are the important words because that, it, it, it means it's got to be intentional. It can't be accidental. They have to be there in order to um, undertake the activity with each other. So bumping into people on the street, probably not included, but if you stick around, maybe you fall, fall within it because you're becoming it's becoming intentional. Um, that's what an indoor place means. That's what a private dwelling includes, um, but doesn't. Um, that's not exclusive. Political body. Um, it's either a political party or a political campaigning organisation. These are pretty wide definitions, um, but look them up. Um, just finally, linked households. And um, these have been concepts which have been in the regulations for a few months. And what it means is that a, to, in a nutshell, a, it's actually a bit further down. Let's see if we can find it. Yeah, that. So it's a five ZA. Simple. Sto long story short, one household has one adult and however many children. Another household is any kind of household with any number of adults. They can combine together as if they were part of the same household and then do things together in groups of more than six as if they were one household. Um, but they have to agree to be part of it. Um, this is the 5A is the £10,000 um, fine. So the rest of the regulations are all enforceable by fines starting at £100, rising to 3,200 for six consecutive offences by the same person. However, there are two ways you can get a mega fine, £10,000. Either a Section 63 type gathering, which you organise one a, a rave of more than 30 people um, indoors. And you can be involved in, hold or be involved in the holding of a gathering. So that's if you're the DJ, you're in there, um, even if you didn't send the tickets out. And no person may, this is 5B, this is another mega fine, um, so compulsory £10,000 fine, hold or be involved in the holding of a relevant gathering, which consists of more than 30 persons, takes place in a private dwelling um, or in public land. So basically, if you if you hold or are involved in the holding of a gathering of over 30 people, could include a child's birthday party if you bake the cake because you're involved in the holding you can get a ten thousand pound fine no ifs no buts um and that is it i i mean i just want to show you one more thing which is where the fines come from fixed penalty notices an authorized person which can be a police officer can be um in some circumstances a, a, someone who works for a council may issue a fixed penalty notice to anyone that the authorised person reasonably believes has committed an offence under these regulations and is, and is age 18 or over. So can't be, can't give them to children. But the author, the police officer, for example, has only has to reasonably believe they've committed an offence. So um, I, I think close to 20,000 fines have now been given out since March. Um, how many of the 10,000 fines? I don't know, but those are the 10,000 fines. Uh, they, they, can, they must be... 10,000 if you breach 5A or 5B, which is the um, th over 30 people raves or, or not raves. Um, and that's where the amounts are. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing now. Um, and just to conclude, as I said at the beginning, please 
follow the guidance. Um, we're all in this together. Um, stay safe. Um, I just hope that this has given you a bit of an insight into what these regulations look like and a bit of a, a bit, and maybe you'd be a bit more comfortable to go follow the link to the regulations themselves rather than relying on interpretation or the guidance interpretation, which is important, but it's not authoritative on what the regulations mean. Um, my, <laughs> my commentary on Twitter isn't authoritative. The only authoritative statement of the law is the regulations themselves. Unfortunately, we are all in this together. Um, we are all subject to these regulations. They're going to keep changing. Um, not much we can do about that, but we can educate ourselves and make sure that we know how to follow them. Um, and if, our, if somebody does come along and say you breach them, we'll know where to look to find out if that's true. Um, so I'll finish by saying again that the Better Human podcast is kindly supported by Goldsmiths Law. Um, and they're pioneering new LLB undergraduate course taught in London. Goldsmiths has open days on Saturday 5th of October, Wednesday 6th of November, where you can meet their law academics and find out more about studying their law programme. If you want to support the podcast, please go to betterhumanpodcast.com. That's betterhumanpodcast.com and consider chipping in a few pounds a month. It's a huge help um, because this podcast, I think this year will just about break even um, if I do one every fortnight. At the moment, I'm doing... A, a few extra because of the crisis and just because interesting things come up so um if i go over it comes out of my own pocket i don't make any money from this i don't pay myself um it's purely because i enjoy doing it um i hope you enjoy it too so thank you very much i'm adam wagner this is the better human podcast see you next time